Welcome back. We'll have to stop meeting like this. Uh, this is the Radio Electronics School, the standard amateur radio course, and this tutorial is going to be on microphones, which is tutorial 19, and your self-test drill for this tutorial is drill 16. Not an awful lot on microphones in the standard syllabus, so we'll be covering this topic fairly quickly, and I may give you a little bit of reading material that uh, you can look at if you choose, you do not have to. For this uh, tutorial I'm going to be referring to reading 17 of the advanced course uh, because it's pretty much the same on microphones although there's a little bit more material in the advanced course. You don't have to read this reading, you don't have to study it, I'm going to go through it with you uh, and highlight the important points. If you want to read this reading, uh, you may, it's in the document folder of your DVD and it's the advanced course readings on, on microphones. I'm not going to read this out to you, I'm just going to scroll down. The very first microphone which we, is not in the syllabus and we don't need to know about it but it just helps us with a more rounded understanding of microphones if we have an idea of where microphones come from. But the original microphone used in telephones and radio was the carbon microphone and let's see if I can get myself a better pointer, there we are, I've got a hand. The carbon microphone is two electrodes and between the two electrodes there are carbon granules and there's a plunger. This electrode is a moving electrode. The plunger is connected to a diaphragm like a cone of a speaker and sound waves hitting the diaphragm move the plunger in and out compressing or rarefying or if you like decompressing the carbon granules. When the, when the plunger moves in the carbon granules are compressed and their resistance decreases. When the microphone, when the plunger moves out, they decompress and their resistance increases. So what we've got is sound being converted into a variable resistance. So if you put a battery in series with a carbon microphone, um, you can get a varying current in the circuit, which is in direct proportion to the sound waves striking the diaphragm and we've now converted sound into electrical impulses. Carbon microphones are not used anymore, they make, they're not very good quality and if you remember the old telephones they were susceptible to um, getting moisture in them and every now and then you would have with the old, uh, the old telephones you would have had to bang them on the table to loosen up the carbon granules because you would get this crackling noise in, the, in your ear which was called frying. Uh, carbon microphones really haven't been used since about the uh, 1960s. Uh, moving down the page a little bit, uh, we come to the dynamic or moving core microphone. Now I'd like to remind you about the GIF animation on the Radio and Electronic School website of Faraday's Law. If you've forgotten it might be a good time to go back to the website, click on supplementary downloads and look for the GIF animation of Faraday's Law. That's where the magnet is going in and out of the coil and there's a galvanometer or a voltmeter on the coil and it demonstrates to you Faraday's Law. When relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnetic field, an EMF or voltage is induced into the conductor. That's the principle of operation of the dynamic or moving coil microphone. Let's have a look at its construction. There is a diaphragm which is a very thin lightweight material. Usually these days it's a thin plastic membrane and that then the diaphragm collects the sound waves so as as the voice hits the diaphragm, the diaphragm will vibrate according to the sound waves. Just hold up a piece of A4 paper in front of you in one hand, in front of your mouth and speak and you'll feel a bit of paper vibrating. That's what 
the purpose of the diaphragm is. The diaphragm is connected to a tube. So as the diaphragm vibrates, the tube also vibrates backwards and forward. And around this tube is wound a coil of wire. And inside the tube, there is a permanent magnet. So when someone speaks into the microphone, this whole tube wire mechanism moves backwards and forwards and that creates relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field and a voltage or EMF is produced at the output of the coil and that voltage or EMF will be AC and it will be an electrical representation of the sound that struck the diaphragm of the microphone. This is the most common type of microphone you're going to find in radio communications and studio work today. Just mention this quickly in passing, nothing to do with your syllabus, but most microphones can be used in reverse. A microphone doesn't make a very good quality speaker and a speaker doesn't make a very good quality microphone. But apart from the carbon microphone, all microphones can be used in reverse and so can speakers. And in a pinch, uh, if, you were, if your microphone was broken, you could hook up an old speaker to your microphone input of your transceiver if you were stuck somewhere in the desert and you could use the speaker as a microphone. It would sound a bit distorted and awful, but it would still work. The other type of microphone you need to know about is the condenser or capacitor microphone. We've learned that if we apply a voltage to a capacitor, it will charge. And the amount of charge on the capacitor is equal to Q equals CE, the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. So the amount of charge on the capacitor will depend upon the applied voltage and the capacitance. Well, what a ca capacitor or condenser microphone is, it's a capacitor with one plate that is connected to the diaphragm. Here's our diaphragm that collects the sound waves. And then we have a fine rod going down to one of the movable plates on a capacitor. The rear plate is fixed, it does not move. The front plate moves when sound waves strike the diaphragm. So what we have here in fact, because the plate moves backwards and forward with the movement of the diaphragm, what we're doing is converting variations in sound to variations in capacitance. And since the capacitance is changing and the charge of on a capacitor Q equals CE, the capacitance times the voltage, the, the charge on the capacitor will be continually changing according to the sound waves. We do it need a battery, it's called a bias battery. We like the carbon microphone, this microphone does not produce its own voltage so we need to put a small battery in series and that capacitor will charge up. The voltage is fixed but its capacitance is variable and, and Q equals CE, charge equals capacitance times voltage. And since C is varying, the amount of charge on the capacitor will vary and we'll get a varying charge and discharge current in the microphone output. And that varying charge and discharge current is an, an exact representation, electrical representation of the sound waves that hit the diaphragm. The capacitor or condenser microphone is the type of microphone you're likely to find in handheld, equip handheld radio equipment and things like mobile phones. It's used because it's so small. Uh, not, it's not as good as the dynamic or moving core microphone in terms of quality, uh, but it's very, very small to get into very small, compact, handheld devices. Remember that a capacitor microphone does require a battery, the dynamic or moving coil doesn't. There is another type of microphone, not in your syllabus, called the Electret. And the Electret microphone is just a variation of the capacitor microphone that doesn't need a bias battery. In reality, I've not seen an Electret microphone without a bias battery, but 
theoretically, uh, an electret microphone doesn't require the BIOS battery. You won't be asked any questions on that. You, you'll need to know about the dynamic microphone, the condenser microphone, and the crystal microphone, which we'll do now. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to read this to you because it's a bit of background about the crystal microphone. This reading is in the document folder. There is no need to read it, uh, but if you want to, you may. The crystal microphone relies on the piezoelectric effect, pronounced piezoelectric. Piezoelectric comes from the Greek, piezo is the Greek for pressure, pressure electricity. If a piece of quartz crystal is held between two flat metal plates and the plates are pressed together, a small EMF or voltage will be developed between the plates, as if the crystal became a small battery for an instant. How much EMF is produced is pretty much proportional to the pressure applied. When the pressure on the plates is released, the crystal springs back and an opposite polarity EMF is produced on the plates. In this way, mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy by the crystal. This is called the piezoelectric effect. If an EMF is applied to the plates of a crystal, the physical shape of the crystal will distort. If an opposite polarity EMF is applied, the crystal will reverse its physical distortion. In this way, a quartz crystal converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Also note that some ceramic materials exhibit the piezoelectric effect. For example, we have a microphone called the ceramic microphone. Uh, it's a piezoelectric microphone. And we have a crystal microphone that is also a piezoelectric microphone. Scrolling down a little. These two reciprocal effects of crystals are known as the piezoelectric effect. Well, if you're thinking ahead of me, here we have another way to make a microphone. After all, the function of a microphone is to convert mechanical energy, sound waves, into electrical energy. And the piezo piezoelectric effect just does just this. Let's have a look at the microphone. You can read the rest of that if you want to. There's no need. We have our diaphragm again. And this time we're using a property of some crystals and materials called the piezoelectric effect so that when you apply pressure to, a, to the crystal it produces a voltage across its plate, across its uh, faces, opposite faces. So it's a crystal microphone is a very simple microphone. We have a diaphragm. The diaphragm could be attached directly to the crystal or it can be connected to the crystal by a fine rod, which is the case here. So as sound waves hit the diaphragm, they compress and decompress the quartz crystal and that produces an AC output voltage. This is a voltage generator. The, the piezoelectric microphone does not require a bias battery. Because this microphone is made from quartz, it is a high impedance microphone because quartz is not a conductor. So the piezoelectric microphones are high impedance microphones, whereas the dynamic or moving core microphone by comparison is a low impedance microphone. And like I said, there's not an awful lot on, on microphones and there's only about six uh, example exam questions. That gives you enough, some idea of the probability of getting a uh, microphone question. So section 16 is our microphones, tutorial 19, drill 16. And let's go through some sample exam questions. 16.1, a moving core microphone is the same as a dynamic microphone. A moving core and dynamic refer to the same microphone. The dynamic microphone the one that relies on Faraday's law for its operation. The type of mic 16.2, the type of microphone which needs an external power source is the capacitor microphone. 
It's the only one that's used today that really does need an external power source. The ceramic microphone is a crystal microphone. Uh, sorry, uh, the ceramic microphone is a piezoelectric microphone. The crystal microphone is a piezoelectric microphone. They're both high impedance. The dynamic, another name for the moving coil that uses Faraday's law, it's a low impedance microphone. The best microphone is the dynamic microphone. 16.3, the type of microphone which relies on the piezoelectric effect for its operation is the crystal microphone, also the ceramic. 16.4, the type of microphone which uses a moving coil within a magnetic field is commonly known as a dynamic microphone. 16.5, a dynamic microphone does not require a bias voltage. A dynamic microphone creates its own voltage. A capacitor microphone or condenser microphone requires a voltage, a battery. 16.6, a high impedance type microphone is the crystal microphone. Crystal microphone and ceramic microphone are piezoelectric microphones and they're high impedance. A moving coil or dynamic microphone is a low impedance. Well, that's it for microphones. A fairly quick uh, tutorial and drill on that. I hope you're enjoying the course, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers for now.